everybody got their agenda and attachments. Okay, well, today is November 2nd, 11 a.m. This is our November meeting for the Commission on the Status of Women. I am Cheryl Pollock, the chair, and would like to officially call the meeting to order. Special guest, uh, Mike Bishop is with us. I see you, Mike, on the screen. Thank you for joining us from the Pasco Economic Development Council. And we will do roll call since we do have a hybrid attendance. Our goal is to have a quorum present, which is eight members. And unfortunately, we are 50% of that today. So we do not have a quorum, but I will go ahead and do the roll call so we can see who we have with us on the virtual option. Leona, Leona Schuler. Jennifer C. Oh, you're right here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl Pollock, Gail Armstrong. I'm here. Thank you, Gail. Kelly Mothershead. I'm here. Thank you. Kelly Sin. Morning, I'm present. Wonderful. Thank you. Dr. Lisa Richardson is two Hi, doors sir. down for me. <laughs> Dr. Rhonda Waddell. I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you. And then we have an open vacant uh, slot for Metropolitan Ministries. We're still working on replacing Nancy, who resigned earlier this year. And then Teresa Foster. Good morning. Good morning. And Jean is right next to me. Rosario Torres. Hello, I'm here. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Denise Nicholas. Summer Robertson. And Lauren Maselli. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll open to public comment. We don't have any guests with us, but I don't know if anybody submitted anything beforehand that we need to hear. No? Okay. So that is agenda item number five. So the next uh, agenda item is approval of the minutes. However, we didn't have a quorum present in, in the October 5th meeting, and we could not approve the August minutes. And now we do not have a quorum present for the November meeting, so we cannot approve the October minutes. Is that correct? All right, ladies. <laughs> So our guest speaker is Mike Bishop, and he will talk to us about some of the key initiatives that are um, available through the Pasco Economic Development Council. And this is a follow-up to our presentations and discussions that we had uh, the last meeting and prior meetings in regard to women in business and some of the initiatives that are available for women in our community. Mike Bishop? Yes, good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great, thank you for having me. I um, have a presentation. Let me go ahead and put that up on the screen for you. Is that okay? Yes, we see it perfectly, thank you. All right, great. So um, like you mentioned, my name is Mike Bishop. I'm the Director of Stakeholder Engagement over at the PASCO EDC. Um, I know you're all familiar with uh, with us and you have one of our best and brightest on your board there, Lauren Maselli. So um, I'm going to go over some of the programs that we offer. We do so many different things, but I really wanted to focus mostly on the entrepreneurship side and some of the opportunities in international business for uh, some of our existing businesses. So just a quick overview on who we are. So we are a 501c3 um, public-private partnership, and we were, found, we were incorporated in 1987. Um, I always want to highlight our mission here. It's something that's very important to me because I um, sometimes help out our director of business development and uh, talk about the different industries that we recruit to Pasco. 
And oftentimes I ask him, why don't we just look at the one that we're really good at? And he points to the mission for me. The mission is always to promote balanced and diversified business growth. So that's why we have our different target industries that we work with and many different programs across the board that we work with too. So we do have our strategic plan right now. Um, these are the different goals inside that strategic plan. Um, you can see it's a three-year plan. We're towards the tail end of that part. Um, many different facets in this. I'm very proud um, with the task that we can see that we cover so many different programs and really help out business from not just the bigger industries, which you've, you've seen, but also in the entrepreneurship side and incubator piece, which I'll go more into as we go through the presentation. So a little bit of what we do. So recruiting businesses, I, I touched on that a little bit. That is uh, traditional economic development, what a lot of people consider us uh, and what we do and going out there and selling Pasco as an attractive place for them to move their business um, and create jobs and, and uh, you know create wonderful opportunities for our community. We also do retention as well for our current businesses. I'll, I'll go into that part. Um, startups and as well as um, our community competitiveness and always valuing different facets in which we can continue to be uh, more competitive across the community. So how we're funded, very, very interesting. We have three different funding sources, uh, one of which being from the Board of County Commissioners, obviously our largest funding source. Um, we are also funded by uh, Penny for Pasco, which is the Penny sales tax portion that goes for its economic development. And we also have our private investors too, which you'll see we have uh, 77 total investors and 28 of which are board or policy council members. So this is a great stat. I like to say I, we did not make these jobs. We help companies make these jobs and help companies invest uh, close to $2 billion in the community and filling almost um, well, nearly 11 million square feet. So one of the things I want to highlight in this presentation as well is our membership in the uh, TV OIT organization. So this is an organization that focuses on women in international trade. And this is another highlight of some of the uh, different programs that we cover and offer across the board. Um, you know, in international trade, there's many different opportunities for uh, getting export assistance, uh, getting planning done. Um, as well as trade missions, although those haven't happened this year, uh, those are typically in the scope of what we do on an annual basis. And our international program director, Jenny Smur, she is tasked with going out there and educating these current businesses that we have here in Pasco and telling them the different programs that we, that we can connect them with to help them. So I'll, that's kind of a good segue into some of the stuff that we do in business retention side, also covering some of these things. A lot of people ask me, well, what is our kind of primary target when we're talking about business retention? And that would be our primary industries. These are the companies that are predominantly business to business sales, um, have more employees above eight, have at least a million dollars in revenue and sell a majority of the product outside of account. So it's bringing revenue, tax revenue into the account. So some of the things that we do for our existing industry, we work with them and obviously uh, connecting with uh, different training grants that are uh, available to them. Um, Career Force is an amazing resource for us, a great partner of ours that helps us in uh, providing these different grants for incumbent workers, um, as well as different uh, job creation incentives that we have for incentivizing businesses to come in. Um, and then as well, AM Skills, I'm sure some of you may be familiar, um, this is an apprenticeship program that we really work closely with. Um, Turner Arbor, our workforce staff partner um, manager, he is typically the one that is working with them and coordinating different um, opportunities that we can work with them and bring people in. So talking a little bit about the exporting stuff, I hit on that a little bit beforehand. Um, these are the different partners on the bottom there. We just had a great event actually a couple of weeks ago, a growing global event where we highlighted these partners and we gave um, excellent information to people that are interested in exporting and the different opportunities, um, different resources that a lot of people don't typically know about. Um, I, I encourage you to look that up. That's actually on our YouTube page, I believe now to go through that. It's just a wealth of information and talking about some of the things I mentioned before, which is export marketing plans, 
um, as well as some of the different um, some of the different successes in international trade as well. Workforce Connect program, I talked in this just a little bit previously. Um, this is relatively new for us and it stemmed from a task force. Um, one of the things that we do on an annual basis is have a couple different task forces to identify needs in the community. Workforce is always one that's at the top of the list. Whenever we talk about recruiting projects, they're always asking, well, do you have the workforce to support? So um, Turner, like I mentioned, it's a great job in coordinating resources available for employers and connecting to employees, as well as secondary education and really tying all that together. It's a very interesting topic and I encourage you all to take a look at our website. I think uh, Turner's done a phenomenal job of that. So I want to hit a little bit on some of the existing business we have here in Pasco that is woman majority owned. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Dixie Bell. This is an amazing story. Um, across the board and just growth here in Pasco. This is a small craft paint manufacturer that started in 2013 and a very small shop, just her, Suzanne Fulford, I actually know her very well, she's a friend of mine and has grown that to 80 employees now and a huge facility. I want to say that it's 30 or 40,000 square feet plus on 52 um, and, or sorry, on, on Ridge Road, I apologize. And um, just a great story. She also does exporting as well. So really growing it from, you know, small shop all the way through in seven years. I encourage you to check out this company. It's a great company here in Boston. In addition, Morgana's Alchemy, she produces um, skincare products. She's got a fascinating story as well. Uh, chemistry background, um, I was overseas when she was working on this uh, formula she calls the Elixir, which is a uh, uh, skin treatment, kind of a, a beautifying young uh, serum, trying to make you know, your face look a little younger, less wrinkles. Um, she was a participant in the event that I had mentioned before a couple of weeks ago. Great story. 80% of her sales actually come um, internationally. So she does a lot of e-commerce, a lot through her website, and uh, just also a, a great story and business that's here in Pasco. Another one I wanted to highlight is Can Can Concealment. This is a this is a really cool shop too. Um, they produce uh, custom um, gun holsters that they're also fashionable as well and more tailored towards women. Um, I believe the story was uh, she uh, got her um, concealed permit and then started looking for holsters and realized there really wasn't much in the way of it looking good or being uh, you know. Uh, tailored towards women. So she went out there and started the company and and uh, they're here in Pasco County as well. So I'll kind of switch gears right now into our entrepreneur side. And this is what we call our smart start programs. This is such a such a cool part of what we do because it's it's across the board for entrepreneurs from coaching um, to incubator space, so offering workspace for people to get up and running all the way through to some funding, which I, I know is a topic that Lauren wanted to hit on a little bit. So I'll kind of breeze through some of these and show you some of the highlights. So I mentioned the incubator piece. We have three different, well, two right now and an additional one coming online uh, very shortly, um, I believe in the next couple of months or so. Um, and they're all, they all have a different approach. So I'll highlight the West and East ones first. So our West Pasco Entrepreneur Center um, has co-working space, a large boardroom, also has um, podcasting equipment and a kind of a, an audio room that people can record and, um, and produce you know, uh, different podcasts, audio recordings. Our East Pasco facility has a food flair to it. So this was a very interesting thing that, that we did in that we created a commercial kitchen. So it encourages food entrepreneurs to come in and use the facility, test out their recipes or how they wanted to produce their different products and um, really give them a platform to grow from there. So many food entrepreneurs are starting in their home kitchens and it's, it's somewhat different when you're going from a home kitchen to a commercial kitchen. So we have several members there that are part of that incubator. Um, they actually held an event last week, which was great. It was a, a drive-through kind of pop-up market that people were able to come to the East Pasco Center and, and buy the different products that these uh, entrepreneurs are creating. So really 
really cool stuff. And then our third one that's coming online is our, um, that's a little bit here. Our third one that's coming online is at the Grove in Wesley Chapel, which is being dramatically redeveloped right now. If, if you've been by there recently, it doesn't even look the same as it did six to 12 months ago. Um, but this is going to have a lot of great flair to it. It's a great building, um, really trendy, modern feel. Um, another really awesome piece of that is that crate center at the beginning or at the, at the front of the complex, I should say. They're going to take uh, shipping containers and repurpose them into different stores, um, food vendors, um, things of that nature. And our, our entrepreneurs, their, our incubator members, have the ability to take some of their ideas and then move that over to a pop-up store and really get that first foothold into business. So this is just an amazing opportunity to get involved with. So I mentioned that penny, um, the penny funding before, and that's really been critical in the funding of Smart Start. Um, this is one of those uh, different programs that allowed us to, uh, you know, take part of the penny funding and get going for entrepreneurs. So I just wanted to highlight that um, in addition to our partnership with the Board of County Commission. So individuals, companies, who, who are we working with? I've kind of highlighted a little bit of that on the primary industry. But keeping on the entrepreneur piece too, um, I'll click ahead here. Here's another uh, facet of the Smart Start program is the co-starters program. And this is a business canvas piece that people can go through and uh, really kind of lay out how they're going to start their businesses from the planning perspective. Because a lot of people have that idea of wanting to start a business and then they say, well, how do I do that now? So this encourages them to create the model um, you know, go through that. What are the kind of strengths, weaknesses of that model, and fine tune that. Fine tune that through the advisement of our um, our mentors. And I also hit a little bit on the incubator program, but just to highlight this, people can uh, become members and then take part of the uh, co working space that's there. They can get a desk. Um, I believe there's also private offices depending on the location. So you can participate in different levels in this. And it, it, can, it can be something that if someone is operating a, uh, uh, let's say a lawn service company, and really they're kind of quarterbacking it from, from the office, they can take part of this and, and these facilities as well. So just another overview of the different things here. I already mentioned the mentoring and counseling piece. Um, they get full Wi-Fi when, when they're on board as incubator members. Uh, marketing pieces, just really across the board services. It's trying to be all encompassing to allow that entrepreneur to um, have all the tools that they're ready to succeed. So one thing I did want to highlight in this is our microloan program. So um, this is a really special program that we can take uh, budding entrepreneurs that are not necessarily bankable yet because it takes Typically, some you know good financial goals before you can go to a bank, and uh, you know if you're in your first year, they're they're just not there. So you know, Mitchell, who's our Smart Start program director, um, he can meet with businesses and kind of ascertain, hey, this is a this is a good plan. They have such a good idea. They just need a little more capital. It's that little extra bump to get them that you know piece of equipment that they need or that uh, that extra software that they need. So um, that is a one that's up to fifty thousand. Uh, the term loan, the term loan is very, it's, it's relatively short. It's up to six years. The, the stipulations are really, it's not going towards real estate, no refinancing. And it's, it's really supposed to be tailored around expenses that can help the business grow. So another part of that is entrepreneur roundtable. These, these are, um, these are very helpful because it allows other, it allows entrepreneurs to talk to other entrepreneurs and bounce ideas across the board. Um, it's always interesting attending these and, and they hear the comments and so often an entrepreneur mentions something and another person says, yes, I have that same issue. So that allows them to kind of work through some of those issues together and also get some guidance from guest speakers that come in and talk um, and our mentors. Too. Our Pasco Enterprise Network, this is um, basically a network of partners that we have that are from, like you can see, like different security, um, 
colleges, um, also some of our partners, SBDC, I mentioned, exporting piece, and libraries as well. So with, with that, that's pretty much the overview. Just wanted to highlight uh, our biggest upcoming event, which is really topical to this because it's affiliated with our Smart Start program, is in January 16th. That's our World Casco. So we'll actually hold this at the Hyatt over there on 56 by 75. It's tailored towards entrepreneurs and giving them information that they need to see. We brought in a bunch of great speakers and um, you know having a, that forum that people can bounce ideas off. So with that, I'll, I'll open it up. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. This was extremely informative. And, you know, I think we all are taking away bits and pieces, but I love the fact that you highlighted some of the um, women majority owned businesses right here in Pasco that are thriving and doing international work. So that was really impressive to hear. Let's open the floor for any questions or any comments. I have a question. Early in the presentation, you mentioned about the Tampa Bay Organization of Women in International Trade. Mm -hmm. What are what are some of the um, commodities or items that are actually being traded internationally? Oh, yeah, that's that's a great question. It, it's it really runs the gamut. Um, you know, I've I've seen like I mentioned before with Dixie Bell, that's craft paints, uh, so manufactured here. Um, it's many it's manufactured here, but that that's that's not just it. I I've, I've also seen um, companies where actually this is really interesting. When I um in my previous life in my business, I actually went on one of these trade missions, and um, a woman that came with me, she ran she runs a business in Naples that uh, makes uh, body bags for forensics. Um, oh. and yeah, it's it's a very interesting company. It's not just that, but it's very important in the ceiling and like, um, you know, keeping those things airtight and environmental. So I, I couldn't tell you exactly just one because it really is across the board. And, and that's the biggest mission of some of the resources that I mentioned too, in educating companies that it's not just, you know, they're looking for a specific thing. I mean, we, at that growing global event, one of the things that blew my mind the most is that we had a representative from Amelie Oil that we all know from Lightning, right? Uh, but he actually goes to the Middle East to sell oil. And he, and, he does, and he does so successfully. So, I mean, that right there tells you that the opportunities are very vast in, in different industries. Can I, can I answer that? Some of that? Oh, oh Commissioner Starkey, I was just gonna jump into. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Commissioner Starkey. Yeah, I'm actually a member of that group. And um, I was lucky enough a few years ago, they gave me an award for the International Person of the Year for my work in international economic development. So they, there are all kinds of women in that group, um, international lawyers, uh, accountants, people who sell things. And um, I will say if, if you're interested in the international economic development, it's a great organization. And um, a, one of our PEDC members, uh, I'm trying to remember her name, I think Remember her name, Mike? She's very proud um, of them. Michelle yeah, Henson? Yeah, M Michelle, Michelle Henson. Michelle, Michelle. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in that, it's a, it's a really uh, interesting organization to join. So maybe I'll have them up here uh, at the barn for a, a women, women in business night. I've been, I've been wanting to do that, to start, start something with them. So um, we'll have to get up. Okay, that was my question. No, that sounds great. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> okay, Cheryl, I'd like to jump in real yeah. quick to elaborate a little bit on the, yes, um, the trade missions. So in a normal year, when we go on trade missions, like Mike said in his previous life, how he joined. So Jenny on our team would set up someone with um, our partners at Enterprise Florida, and they do a trade grant, like a gold key trade grant, I believe is what it's called. That's so it's a $5,000 grant. I think the company um, owner from like Pasco would put out $500, I believe, up to $500 towards it, and then they would get the grant for the rest of it. But you do have to go through a full evaluation. So yes, we have a lot of different things being traded or exported out of Pasco County in general right now, but for these specific trade missions, you do get evaluated based on the country that we are going to because they will set up up to like 10 meetings for you 
to go to that, um, once you're in that country, you go to these meetings and you sell your products to those people and you um, work through it there. So you do have to get evaluated to make sure that your product is appropriate for the market that we're going into at that time. But outside of that, we also have programs that'll allow you, um, they'll help you with your marketing plans for exporting for free. Um, there's a bunch of other really great things. So, but Mike's whole presentation, it's funny because I don't even, that was like a third of what we do as an EDC basically. Right. We do have a lot of opportunities. I'm sorry, that was my toddler. He, yeah. he likes to do this okay, on someone, Mondays. Someone's making a lot of noise in the background. Like, yeah, that's my toddler. He's not, okay. Monday transitions are a little rough on him from okay. having mommy all weekend. <laughs> um, but we understand. There, there are plenty of opportunities for women entrepreneurs or women in business for the EDC to help them grow. Um, lots of things for free, thanks to the Penny for Pasco program, like Mike was saying. Um, we're able to give a lot of different resources to them. And we do, I don't think we highlighted it, we do have um, an education series, which is, mostly virtual right now, I think, through the Smart Start program. So last week, we just had um, marketing and social media and how it can help grow your business. And we have other topics with financial advisors on there, um, computer software. We do a lot of things like that through the Smart Start program. Great. Well, I think these are definitely all key areas that we want to lift up and continue to promote and support. And I think that there might be, you know, some people in our community that are struggling and trying to get their business ideas going and learning about it through this forum might be their opportunity. Thank you. Thank you again, Mike. Very, very informative. No problem. Have a great day. Thank you. You as well. Take care. Okay. So we're going to move on to item number eight and old business and I know in the past we had a stream of bullet points. And so what I tried to do is put it in a chart so we can f have a, a, a flow of information and really see where we are making progress, where we're getting stuck, or you know if there are items that we just simply need to move off of our work plan. So in your packet that was sent out by Johanna, thank you very much, Johanna, for communicating all the documents um, that got sent out. You should have seen a link at the end of your agenda to the handouts and the work plan is there. And so what I thought we would do, and I'm open to your feedback if this format does not suit you, but I just felt like the agenda was turning into, you know, like <laughs> 20 bullets on projects. So, um, so I just quickly turned it into a project work plan. So the first item is really just looking at our um, established meeting schedule. And I know that we had some polling about changing it. Mm -hmm. And the first Monday of the month at 11 was the consensus. And so I just wanted to open that up for confirmation, discussion, comments, and make sure that we're all good with sticking to Monday at 11 a.m. Yeah, unfortunately, Monday is the day that I don't like <laughs> because it's my busiest day. And this I've been kind of trying to make do this since I've been appointed. Right. Um, but yeah, going forward, I, I don't not willing to do a whole nother year of Mondays. Um, well, and duly noted, I think that me. yeah, I think that our struggle was trying to hear from fifteen people and find the right. consensus mm -hmm. and. Um, I, you know, I definitely understand that. And since we only meet once a month, hopefully. Monday at 11 is good for me. It's the afternoon that conflicts right. with our president's meeting. Right. Yeah. I moved around some standing meetings as well. So the good news is that we only meet 10 times a month and, you know, oh, 10 times a year. Gosh, thank you. That's scary. That's a lot. I won't make nine of them. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Um, 10 times a year. And so we really want to have some priority uh, attendance and participation so that we can really make this commission what we all envision it to be when it was um, restarted three years ago. And so thank you for your comments. The next one is the current roster. I'm sorry, how do yes. we confirm? Are we, are we sticking with it or is it still out? 
No, it's it's confirmed. Oh, I think the okay. only dissent was um, from Jean, and so she said that she's willing to hang in there for another year. <laughs> and so I probably kids. won't make too many this coming year. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Oh, you're not. I, I hung in for this this year. Right. This the, what we're the, what we're finishing up, but yeah, I'm. It's it's tough. I can't I can't do it. Our original time was Monday at two thirty. And due to the um, technology needs that require us to meet and have the hybrid meeting, that's when the 11 a.m. got thrown in there. And so that... Um, I mean, if we continue with the hybrid, I might be able to, you know, because it's like almost an hour for me to drive over here, mm -hmm. an hour to drive back. Gene, yeah. that's a so the same city. Maybe. Maybe when they're in Dade City, you can attend those, and when they're in Newport Ritchie, you can do on right. virtual. That's a possibility. That might make it a little easier because I'm going to try to attend Newport Ritchie, but Dade City will be tough for me. So I think that in the going year, if we try to figure out a plan so that we can try to have eight people in attendance so we have a quorum, and then that those that can't will know ahead of time those specifically who have to be uh, on virtual. Right. And, I, you know, one of my ideas is that we aim for 15 in attendance and know, you know, who's getting an excuse to call in hybrid virtually because this is challenging. You know, I feel like we're we've already had our, um, you know, got knocked off our feet with the pandemic and just trying to rebuild and maintain our momentum and get some things done. Um, and so it is hard when we are not able to approve things and, and make um, votes on things because of the lack of a quorum. So I think at this point, Jean, we'll have to vote again. How about that? All I can do is try to yeah try to make it. But I I Let's you know, bring I struggled it back up. this past year with the Monday thing. So right going forward, I, you I were recruited based on the you were appointed, knowing that it was a two thirty time, and then it changed. Well, and then. I thought it was going to be in Dade City too. Oh, okay. But we haven't had any in Dade City that I've I've attended. Right. We haven't had any Dade City. Yeah, we were meeting centrally, and so is there any chance that we can have five and five in the coming year? So we can do one month in Port Richie, one month Dade City. Okay. Can you check the calendar? How does that sound, Gina? And I I would. You know, make an effort to get to the Dade City one because it's only ten minutes. Okay, you know I, that's a lot better than an hour one way, an right. hour back. Right. I think that's fair. Any other comments on that? I think that we're all stretched beyond limits because we're a countywide initiative, and so we're all coming from different areas. It takes me an hour to get here as well. Yeah, me too. I so know you... that Johanna mentioned that Dade City is the library. Is it possible if we do five and five to right. be here and then the other five actually at the Dade City uh, Board of County Commission Right, location? that's what I just proposed and she said that she's going to check she's on the schedule. Oh, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Any other comments from our members virtually on that item? <laughs> This is Lauren. I can try definitely to attend the new forward. I didn't realize we needed eight whole people there for a quorum every time. I can try and arrange it um, once we get the schedule ahead of time so that I have a babysitter so I can attend new, all the Newport Ritchie meetings at least. Because that's closer for me. If I, if I need to go to Dade City, I can, but that'll end up taking a few hours out of my day. So I prefer to be Newport Ritchie as my home base. Absolutely. And we do have that schedule since we, we know um, that we meet the first Monday um, with the exception of two months. Thank you. Would that time still be 11 or 2.30? So Johanna is going to confirm now. with us because of the logistics that require the um, YouTube live sharing. And yeah. so she's going to check with us and get back with us. That's, it takes me an hour to get here. How long is it going to take me to get to Dade City? from Wesley Chapel? Um, probably 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm close, close to 30 okay. minutes, nice. yeah. yeah. And it's a commitment, you know, I understand that we're all, I mean, for those of us that have been um, on it a little while, I know that it's a commitment. And so we thank you and we appreciate your commute time and the dedication that you've had so far and look forward to continuing to have, you know, more participation. Um, so thank you. 
So the next one is really looking at our roster and we are um, still working on a replacement for Nancy Dougherty. And so we did hear back from the Metropolitan Ministries organization and due to the uh, requirement that the representative must be a Pasco County resident, mm -hmm. her replacement is not able to fulfill the position because she is a Hernando County resident. And so the organization is still looking at who they can appoint as the representative for Metropolitan Ministries. Does anybody have any contacts or any other recommendations that they would like to mention for us to follow up on at Metropolitan Ministries? This is Kelly. Now. I have a comment that if they're not able to choose a suitable candidate for that, maybe we need to go back to the um, uh, county commission and ask them to choose a different charitable organization to be represented so that we don't lose somebody on our board. That's a very good idea. I hadn't even considered that. Thank you, Kelly. We have so, lots of organizations uh, to choose from, so I don't think it would be that difficult. Okay, so our next, how does everyone feel about that? Any concerns or any? I have a suggestion for someone that's kind of in that same world. Um, and that would be Patty Templeton. Oh yes, with One Community Now, I'm very familiar. Yeah. Okay, so what yeah, would be our process? <laughs> because it's a, uh, it's, it's a whole process. Commissioner Starkey, can you take it to the board? Yeah, Johanna, can you uh, make sure that gets on the agenda? So because Metropolitan Ministries is one of the 10 appointing community organizations, um, I think we would have to let them know that we remove, we, yeah. we're looking into removing them out of courtesy. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. And then what is the pro what is to find someone? Because we, fo I followed up I think directly. we owe them the opportunity. Right. But I don't think I we have to while. wait for months because we only get to meet once a month. And I think that we don't have time to, to continue to wait month after month to find someone. Right. Yeah. We just made contact yeah. with Nancy's predecessor a few weeks ago. So I think we owe them a little bit, maybe a, a few more weeks. Okay, I thought, I'm sorry. John, I thought, I thought someone said they didn't have anybody there that's from Pasco County. Well, so I misunderstood. We yeah, this is Cheryl speaking. When we initially followed up, I followed up with the vice president that supervised Nancy's position and there was no recommendation or response. And then we kept pursuing it over the last several months. And then the predecessor that Johanna was able to make contact with um, in the last two, two weeks really responded and said she was willing to serve. However, she was not a Pasco resident. And so that's kind of the update that we're talking about right now. So I think we have two, two, two options. Option one, we continue to pursue a representative for Metropolitan Ministries. Option two, and it's based on the recommendations from the existing commission that we go back to the um, Board County Commission and ask for a different organization to be represented. And we can't vote because we don't have a quorum. I can um, take your recommendations. Well, this is <laughs> Kelly. This is Kelly Sin. Um, you know, Restored Hope is a homeless ministry over in East Pasco primarily, and they um, are, I believe, either becoming or already an umbrella of Metropolitan Ministries. And the program director over there is Kathy Hunt. For those of you that are yes. more prominently in East Pasco, may be familiar with her, but she. Um, may be a good, and she does live in Pasco County, and so she may be a good uh, recommendation who I think would would provide a, a, a lot of support to us on this commission. That is an excellent idea, excellent. Kelly. Do you mind reaching out to her, and then we will have Johanna follow up with the paperwork? Absolutely. Just so she gets absolutely. a heads up? Yeah. Yep, that absolutely. I will reach out to her. I remember they actually, we did the United Way workplace campaign and Restored Hope came in and presented to our staff. So I know that they are officially under the umbrella of Metropolitan Ministries. Yeah, I love that idea. Her. I agree. Okay, we've got a lot of head nods. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, Cheryl, would it make sense though to maybe like put a, a deadline um, 
Just yes, to, mm -hmm. so by the end of the I year. I want to put something on the calendar so that um, you know, we can address that maybe if we have to at a county commission meeting to remove them, but sometimes deadlines really do spur action. And so maybe that would give everybody a good time frame. So in the expected outcomes box, we're going to put by the end of December, we need to have an appointee or a recommendation to change the organization. And I, these are recommendations since we can't vote. I just want to make that clear. Leona? I know I have this question. It's like, why do we have to wait till the end of the year? Because if we can get this candidate on board, we can start moving forward. Well, I think because we're in November already and we're meeting in oh. the, we're meet, the next meeting is December. Okay. So if we have a recommendation and the um, the Kathy, if Kathy Hunt is interested and completes the paperwork, it has to go to the board oh. mm -hmm. and then it'll get, you know, it'll probably be on the December agenda oh, and then it'll be January before they're able to attend. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know the process. All right. Yeah. What's the name of uh, the organization that Kathy Restored Hunt? Hope. Dates Which and... is, uh, I don't know the legal terminology, but I know that they are either a partner or under the umbrella of Metropolitan Ministries. And just for clarification, because I'm looking at the agenda here. So our December 7th meeting in Dade City, is that at 11 a.m. or 2.30? 2.30 is the time we that's available. Okay. No, Thank the, you. the 11 a.m. wasn't available yet. Yes. Thank you. And I'm sorry, we'll get to that as soon as we get through this work plan. So the next key item was the badges. And this is really an ongoing item, just so any new member gets their badge and is able to use it and wear it um, for the meetings. Are there any members that need a badge so that we can get that in to Johanna? There's a couple uh, sitting on the back thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pick up too. Cheryl, I mean, we were talking about the roster. And at the last meeting, we had a discussion about Summer Robertson, who got married, who's now Summer Blevins mm -hmm. with United Way. So, were you guys able to reach out to her? Because she's been absent now for months. I would have to look at the um, attendance. I don't know. Because that know was discussed at our is. last meeting in October. Um, so let's sure. add that to the progress and updates because that did. Do you have her contact? Would you be willing to reach out to her? on behalf of the commission to find out. I can I can reach out. Okay, That's great. Thank you. And the new I think there's name. some question whether or not she's actually That's still connected right. with United Way. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't just, I haven't actually spoke to her. Okay. Um, because, you know, I'm not the chairperson or anything like that, but um, I can reach out to her and find out if she's still interested or she's still representing United Way. Okay. Um, that would help. I mean, I'm just trying to spread yeah. a little bit of the task around mm -hmm. because we all have, you know, full-time careers. So we're just trying to help each other out. I will text her right now see if she'll answer me. Excellent. Let me get to the roster. Is it possible that, and I don't know, everybody else might want to let us know whether or not you want to share our contact information because we were supposed to get together. I had no phone number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. so you know, in most of the organizations that I'm involved with, we at least share the contact information so we can talk to each other. Okay, mm -hmm. is we that possible? That. Is everybody okay with Good that? Yeah. And Johanna has that whole list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can reach out to me for contact info. Rather than having a list for everybody. We can put together a list. This was discussed a few meetings ago, uh -huh. um, but it becomes public record. Oh, I got you. Right. So it's up to you guys if you want me to do it or not. I don't care. Well, if people have their personal cell phone number as their contact, they probably don't want it to be public okay. record. So I'll call you for Denise's number. No, you're going to give it to me before we leave. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, I think what the members have been doing is just exchanging information on their own. Okay. But you can always reach out to me and I can forward you whatever I have. Thank to. you. Yeah. Okay. So just being mindful of the time, I know that we um, try to finish in an hour, so we may not get through all of these items. And um, so the next one is to, is looking at our activities that we've been discussing over the last year, some of them more than a year. Um, and so looking at the establish and present annual work plan. And so right now we are looking to do a presentation next year. Usually it's around the March time, which is what happened this year. And so we, you know, got bumped due to the pandemic. And so we'll be working with Johanna to identify a date and get that date on the calendar as soon as the opportunity arises. Social media, I know Jean has done a phenomenal job just inviting people. <laughs> and so it's great to have that momentum on there. We really just want to look at, you know, what, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? What, what are the action items that we want people to respond to so that we're adding more meaning to the work of the commission? Um, are you getting any questions or any responses from people, or is it mostly just the likes that we're I've seeing going on? I've just been seeing up? the likes, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if um, Johanna can tell us the count. Do you mon are you monitoring the count on our Facebook page? I wrote it down a few days ago, but I don't have it on me. So we'll add that to the work plan and include that. I don't know where we started from to where we're at. You know, I don't know what kind of, because I, I didn't write down the numbers. Right. Because I really wasn't, you know, like in charge. So I didn't write down where we started from. But I know that I have sent out the invite to like our page to a lot of people. We've gotten a lot of response. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to know what that number is. Okay. And every I, time we meet, we could discuss it to see, you know, how many people were reaching and... So right now we have 111 page likes, 58 post engagements, 184 people that we've reached through our, our posts. Okay. Good. Excellent. We have 515 people that follow us and 454 people who like us. 400 and what? 454 likes and then 515 people follow us. Oh, cool. Mm. Add one because I just liked it. So, <laughs> <laughs> great. So, as the um, as the lead person responsible for this area, I know we have several names there, but is it okay that I? Have you there, Jean, so that we can get updates and I'll just fill in the, the boxes before the meeting? Okay. Okay, great. Could do that. So I just got a few emails from Denise. She says I'm attending the meeting virtually, but I'm unable to unmute. Okay, we'll add her to the roster. She says I would also please ask for 2.30 p.m. meetings. <laughs> Denise, I have your badge here. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Denise. Well, December will be 2.30, so we're, we're on the roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next one is really looking at our schedule of speakers. We've had some excellent speakers over the last couple of months that have been relevant to the work of the commission, and so this section is really just recommending anybody that you feel um, would be a benefit for us to hear from. And so uh, thank you, Lauren. She recommended Mike Bishop, who was our speaker today. And if you have any speakers that you feel that we could get on the agenda, you would just communicate with myself or Johanna, and then we would coordinate. And because of the virtual nature of our meeting, they get a, a specific invite that has a link that allows them to share their presentation and whatnot. So we did discuss on uh, item number seven, and we had high hopes that we would be able to present in person. However, that is not possible, but the resolution will be added to the December 8th Border County Commission meeting. 
here at the Newport Ritchie location and the recommendation is that we meet for a photo with the Board of County Commission um, during their break, which is at oh. noon. Okay, that sounds good. The last picture that we took and the only picture that I think that we have on record is um, when we were, you know, doing a um, a presentation and we took a picture during one of the um, one of the breaks. So how does everyone feel about that? It's here, correct? Good. It's yeah. Yes, it will be here um, outside near the flags at the West Pasco Government Center. So all of our virtual people, we would love to see you on December 8th at noon. Okay. Item number eight is looking at our involvement with breast cancer December awareness. 8th, I thought you said December 7th. No, you just said December 8th. I thought it was the 7th. The 7th is the monthly meeting. The meeting, the and then the 8th is going to be the photo. Okay. Gotcha. Yes, the 8th is the Board of County. Com yes, I'm sorry. The 8th is the Board of County Commissioners meeting, and we will actually be added to the uh, agenda, the consent agenda for our uh, resolution honoring women, Women's History Month and Women's Suffrage Centennial. Now, we did discuss inviting the women that were mentioned in the resolution. Is that still something we would like to do? I think or, so. Okay. They have been invited and the majority of them have replied that they'll be there. Excellent. So they will also be, we'll take two pictures, one with the commission and one with all of the honorees. Thank you, Johanna, for confirming. So eight is that we had a discussion at the last meeting that we would definitely like to be more involved with raising awareness uh, for breast cancer uh, during the month of October and leading up to it. And so a focused activity for 2021 was proposed and Leona and Denise decided that they would volunteer to help figure out what we will do and bring it back to the commission. Is that, am I on target ladies? Did I get that right? Uh, on number eight? Yes. I think I, um, if you go back to number three, oh wait, not three. Was it breast cancer or was it the business directory? Volunteered for both. <laughs> oh my Lord. <laughs> you were, you were super excited that meeting, but we'll, I think we're going to, when we get to 12, um, and we're running close on time, so I want to really push That's through. Okay. Whatever um, you need me to do. Right? I think that we're going to get some help from the, um, the Economic Development Council, and we may not have to create work for ourselves. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got a big help. Okay. So number nine is really um, a, a big agenda item for us because this has been a lingering topic for more than a year, and we really want to get some momentum around our intentions and our our goal with creating a special event to raise funds that will support one or two issues that we identify as a priority. And so Lauren had been the lead with a sub small subcommittee um, back in 2019. And then um, we we are here and towards the end, seventh in our seventh month of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I know that we tabled it. However, we're ready to pick it back up. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren, do you want to talk a little bit about what your needs are to reignite that uh, subcommittee so that we can start to get some momentum with this idea? Um, I know we mentioned Summer uh, being absent. I'm pretty sure that's the last time we heard from her was when her and I were going to form that subcommittee and then COVID uh, pandemic hit. But um, what what does everyone feel right now? The EDC, we just had our first in-person and hybrid event. So they're, they're starting to happen. Um, there's lots of restrictions depending on venues and things like that. So I have no problem starting the discussion back up, but should we maybe make this a focus for our next meeting for all of us to kind of discuss for us to then go into a subcommittee? Because I don't I know. We, I think that we have some people that are already saying that they would like to join the subcommittee. So I think 
My recommendation would be for you to corral the subcommittee and to bring back a recommendation on how do we move forward. Okay. Um, does I, does anyone on our commission, are some of you restricted from meeting in person? I know a lot of organizations still have restrictions and aren't allowing staff to go to events and stuff like that right now. Anybody on the floor want to comment on that? Um, no, other than Lauren, this is Jenny. So if you want to just email me, I'd be happy to just, you know, meet you for coffee or we can talk over the phone to maybe come up with something for the December meeting. I'd, I'd be happy to help you with that. Okay. Before December. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then Denise's contact information, you can request that from Johanna. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. We're okay. So the um, print and digital media presence, I know that we have a rat card and we're trying to make sure that we are disseminating them. Are there any events coming up that you feel that we need to have a presence at or any places that our rat card needs to be displayed? Um, Mike mentioned that we have that grow, um, that event for Smart Start in January, and that will be in person at the Hyatt in Wesley Chapel. So it's a big day of entrepreneur-focused programming and guest speakers. So that could be a really great place. I'm sure that um, the EDC would let you guys have a table if someone wanted to work it. It's okay. on a Saturday. And I also think just at the government centers too, we, we should have a... Mm -hmm. Uh, rack or a rack little assist, yeah. plastic thingy. Is there a consistent area that we would be able to display our rack card? Yeah, so I, when you first come in, there's like a big circle. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then what about in East Pasco? Probably I know when lobby. I walk in, there's some. Right in the lobby. Yeah, yeah there's some. Tables. A historic building, there's tables, so. Okay. Do we know what our stock is right now? Because I do not have an idea. How old? Yeah, I think. You mean the, the bucket that had all that stuff? No, the person, oh, I can't think who it was that was after me at that event. Where is that? Where is our our bin of stuff? The, the Morgan by Jenny had it. <laughs> I was there for early morning setup, and I can't remember. Let me think about who came out, who was with me, who who relieved me, because somebody did relieve me. It's is it MIA? Does anybody know where the uh, container is? From I the thought conference? it was going back to. Because it would Catherine, have our tablecloth okay. yeah, and we yeah. have it at the county commission office somewhere. Is Morgan on today? Is no, Morgan she's not on. Morgan? She had she had said somebody else had it. I don't think so. I think it went back to to one of the offices. Yeah, I was pretty sure. Yeah. I think Morgan. Because our last said it event was, in was Commissioner Starkey's office. Was at PHSC yeah. when we set up for the um what was that event? It was, it was the women's women in empowerment. Yeah, women empowerment. Yes. Okay. What month was that? February. So I wouldn't mind volunteering to man a table if we get it in January. Okay, excellent. So Leona is availing herself again um, to be on a rotation. <laughs> yeah. How I don't know the Lauren. How long is the event? Do you know how long the event is on the sixteenth um, of January? I think it's eight to two. If someone doesn't want to sit there because there will be like classrooms and everything going on. Um, so there's not going to be like consistent FaceTime. You know what I mean? It'll just be in between the sessions and everything. Right. We could definitely just put right. the rack cards out if we wanted. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be good because I know when we did the women in um, empowerment at PHSC, there were distinct break times and, you know, that's when people Yeah, there are only would, like 15 uh, minute breaks during ours. We were in the classrooms and just left the tables pretty inactive, so. Just to confirm, that's the Grow Pasco event? That is the Grow Pasco event, yes, January 16th from 8 to 10. Cheryl, my yeah. 
back March 2nd, uh -huh. meeting agenda said that the box went to with Morgan to the right. commissioner's office. The that Morgan. was the last note that I made of that box. <laughs> so we'll follow up with Morgan. <coughs> I just sent you a message. Okay, great. We'll find it. It's got to be somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just, you know, snugly. It's, it's was snug Was that somewhere. the last one or was it that what women want at the Hyatt? That was in September, I think. No, I we didn't do any. After. It was after. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Never mind. Sorry. Is, hello, it's Rosario. Uh, I have many events, but he's Boro County. I don't know if you want to participate on different events for his Borough County is fine. No, we want to respect no. the commission that's in Hillsborough commission. County. Okay. The commission fine. on the status of women in Hillsborough County. And we love working together, but we want to respect that they, you know, represent their organization in their county. Okay, perfect. So Morgan just replied. She says, to my understanding, it was never returned to our office. Our office was closed. I won't be back in the office until Wednesday, but I'll check again then. Okay. Thank you. Somebody's garage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the last uh, item, or well, there's two items, collaborate with existing coalitions. I mean, we made a decision early, um, especially after we went through all the presentations that our priority focus would be um, on domestic violence awareness and prevention. And so I think that we really need to put some meat or muscle around what is it that we want to accomplish and what is it that we can look back on after a year or two and say that we did something to move the needle. Um, we do have the existing coalition that uh, spoke to us earlier this year. And so, I, Kelly, if there's any specific project or any item that you feel the commission can get behind and, and really support, we welcome your recommendations. But I don't want us to forget that we spent a lot of time learning and absorbing the information from our community leaders about different areas for us to focus on. And we did make a selection. And so we, we, we need to put some feet and we need to put some legs to that and determine what we want to do. Any thoughts, any reflections? This is Kelly Mothers that I, I totally agree. Um, I don't know if Kelly Sims got some things going on that we can get behind and join in um, to help facilitate. I have some things that I'm working on, some things with the uh, Girl Scouts who are trying to have a bigger presence in Pasco County because they don't have much presence here. And I think that would be a good thing for us to participate in as well. So I'm starting to work with them a little bit. Excellent. Thank you for sharing, Kelly. Um, so this is Kelly Sin. Um, as far as us, you know, any of our events and like awareness campaigns and stuff, we really had to kind of back down, obviously, because of the pandemic. I do know that we um, have intentions of tentatively starting as soon as, you know, March of 2021 with some of those awareness events. So I will keep you all posted once we're able to solidify dates. But I think just you know, helping to educate the community um, on our services and the availability so that survivors know what's out there. Uh, and then obviously, so that our community members know what support we can provide to businesses and local groups um, would be helpful. So I will, like I said, everything is pretty tentative right now just because we aren't, everything is so unknown and uncharted territory. But as soon as we have... Right. Uh, you know, solidified some dates on some of these awareness events or um, any of the things that we plan to do. I will keep you all obviously in the loop with that. And I, I appreciate it as far as, you know, getting the word out there about our services and, and what people can do to access those. Excellent. And so my second question would be, are, is there a project that we could possibly um, align our proposed fundraising event to support? Um, I have, you know, depending on, oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Kelly, the only 
one thought that came to mind. I'm not sure if this would be appropriate, but I know you were talking about doing the express feedback for good initiative to raise funding. I wasn't sure if it could be the CSW, you know, added some additional support mm -hmm. um, in that effort. Yeah, I appreciate that because actually that was one of the things I was just going to say. And I think we're targeting February because February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. And so we're partnering with some of our um, sister centers throughout the state on that. So once we actually get everything finalized, but it's looking as 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 far as for us date wise, it'll be February for that. So that might be a good um, opportunity for the CSW to help support that initiative. And what is it called? Express Express Feedback for Good. Okay. And it's just an extremely easy way for any or we had recently done it at the college and then I had introduced um, the former Miss America Nicole Johnson is head of the 100x firm and yeah. I had recently connected her with Kelly because much like us we've had to cancel our events right. that brought unrestricted dollars in due to COVID and basically what it is it's a very simple way of literally anybody anywhere completing a survey, giving their opinion about local businesses. Mm -hmm. Every survey that's com completed, it's $2. Oh, Our wow. foundation in 30 days raised $30,000. And that was that for you guys. I did the survey. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're familiar with how yes. it works. So I had shared that with Kelly, um, you know, thinking Sunrise might be interested and and they were. So again, I'll, you know, the more that we could do to support it as well, it would help to increase that the amount of money they're able idea. to bring. And yes. it's so simple and, and easy yeah. for I mean, it almost actually, if you think about Lauren, you know, just trying to put together an event with some of the uncertainties and still some of the restrictions in 2021, I mean, this may be a nice way to pivot and do something that's virtual that we could get our 500 followers and hopefully more involved in. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best ways to promote it too is we did a lot of social, social media, media and then videos as well. Okay. So, you know, it could definitely promote a collaboration and show the commission's support of Sunrise. Okay. Well, we um, will look forward oh, to I just wanted to more. jump in, Cheryl, before you, before you move on to the next one. Um, yes. Do you guys remember, I think Summer was involved because when we were initially talking about an event and there was something about if we were getting donations for something like domestic violence or anything, um, another organization, something about us collecting funds and she was going to be looking into running it through United Way, I believe. Um, did we ever get any clarification on anything like that? It's yeah. because we don't have a 501c3. Right. Uh, Summer right. was going to, I did way handle that. Okay. I, yeah, I don't recall. And so, I, I mean, we can follow up when we connect with, with Summer. Two, two connections. <laughs> Number one, are we, is she still connected and representing United Way? And if not, then we have to ask United Way to appoint right. a new representative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if my memory serves me right, we were going to partner with a nonprofit and yes. they would handle the, the donations that come in. That was correct. Okay. I do. I, I have a couple ideas um, jumbling in my head now that we're talking about um, the events, potentially doing something virtual or just maybe even a social media push. I know the county does have a videographer now, so I'm not sure if we could put in a request that maybe their videographer could help us with whatever our focused effort is, if it's the domestic violence, if it's the February um, kind of PSA thing, and have it come from the Commission of Status of Women in partnership with some of these other organizations. That could be a really cool way for us to get the word out on social media and help get a following, and then maybe we can use um, that survey link to help generate some additional dollars to a program too. So those are just a few ideas that I immediately have bouncing in my head. Is that like a recording you guys would want to do? Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, Aaron, your um, videographer that you guys have in the media relations department, um, it could just be like kind of a PSA for the for the CSW. Just basically we'd get like B-roll footage from some of these organizations that already 
have their marketing plans against domestic violence or whatever other topics that we wanted. And we could have him put together kind of a PSA from the CSW and how people in Pasco County can help combat these issues. The only thing is, I think you guys need to use your funding for that, to pay for that. I'm not sure okay. we could use one of the county departments to do that. Don't we have okay. like a $5,000 budget? I think it's like 500. Is it 5,000 or 500? Okay. $5,000 budget. Okay. So, okay. I know other videographers too that love working with um, special programs like this. So, if that's something we chose to do, I wouldn't mind um, going out and trying to get things on it or seeing what well, if I, I can love, have anyone volunteer it. I love the idea of virtual. I think that um, people are responding well to that. And, you know, we do have a pretty fair amount of followers that we could build on. So I think if you, um, any, if anybody else is interested in brainstorming with Lauren on that committee, please reach out and let us know so we can put you together. And then yeah, if the, everyone could just email me after the meeting, that would be great. Whoever wants to, and then we could just have a little sub meeting before December. Right. Um, I like the idea, Cheryl. I think maybe a marketing initiative that still helps something and not so much an event. If we can just come right. up with something that's still a nice big push and can help a cause and have the same effects of the event, I think it would be something that's a lot easier to put together right now. Correct. Especially I wouldn't say with easier. <laughs> But yeah, well, especially effective. with some of the uncertainties. I mean, I know right. that several of the event sites are hosting, but they're very they're limiting crowds. So if they would typically host 200, then it's 100. You know, um, and so I just I'm excited about the potential, and I really want us to make sure that we keep this at the forefront of our work plan because this we spend a lot of time learning and, and getting those you know presenters to come out and figuring out what are we going to focus on and then we chose the focus and then we've kind of um, had to deal with the pandemic this year so this work plan is intended to help us stay focused and track our progress so that we know what we're trying to accomplish and that we can say that we accomplished it. Okay, last one. I am going to recommend that we take it off the work plan because Lauren did share that as a result of our inquiry earlier uh, a couple of months ago about women in business that they are now creating a, um, or Lauren, just help me with the wording, but you all have a way that you're going to be able to pull data to, to identify women in business. Yes, so right? <laughs> yes, so our um, our current software that we were using for the year, we weren't able to track if it was a women owned, minority owned, veteran owned. We could make maybe like notes in our software for that, but now we're going to be able to actually categorize and we're going to have to go back and do some of the contacts we have in their retro, but everyone that's coming in new into our system will be sorted that way. So then we'll be able to pull lists um, to see if there's women veteran owned businesses or just women owned or women minority owned. So we do have software that we are starting to sort all of that out. So we're pretty excited about that. And so what is the timeline on us possibly being able to get a list if we wanted to put together some type of just, you know, just convey or display or um, some something that we would be able to just shout out to all the women business owners in our community? We just switched to the software. We're on. We just finished our first thirty days on it, so we're still working okay, out right. some of the kinks and stuff. So let's let's revisit maybe in another quarter. I would say, give okay, us so three I'll months to get through the there. holidays. Yes. Okay. I'll put that down for maybe February. Sure. That we'll yeah, follow up. And we'll, yeah. That sounds good, and we'll see where we're at with it. There's a lot of stuff we're sorting through right now. Excellent. Cheryl, kind of to. Piggyback on that, um, women-owned business um, comment there. Back in the spring, we were talking about organizations that support women and having a list, like a resource list. Did that just kind of go by the wayside, or I don't, I don't remember seeing it on the agenda and the minutes last time. So um... it was definitely like in the spring before COVID hit when we were talking about, you know, just all the different organizations in Pasco County that 
support women or their women organizations. And okay, well, I can add it. I can add that to the work plan. I think that's the purpose of the work plan is that these things won't get lost on okay. the agendas because it, it was really hard to try and um, you know figure out what we were doing with all the bullet points. And so, what is the recommendation to add to the work plan that we? Can you state it specifically? I, I would recommend that we, you know, compile the list of organizations that support women. And I know- Like a resource list? or in addition? Yes, like a, yes. Exclusively or in addition? Because I would say there's a lot of organizations that support both gender, you know, men, men and women, but- You know, like you the WOW group and- Oh, okay. You know, just all the different groups and organizations that, that are out there. Like I know, I remember mentioning like the Pasco County Cattle Women is a group that meets and, uh, you know, with, with agriculture. And, you know, there's just a lot of different groups out there that okay. might be of interest to women and we could, Excellent. We could post that on our social media and who would like to be the lead for that so we can put that on the work plan. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I the the mind. other one was a published uh, list of women owned businesses. And so um who would like to be the lead working with Lauren on that um next in the next year? I just want to make sure we are spreading the wealth of work. I, I can do that with oh, Lauren as well. You sure? Because it kind of goes together. We're trying to spread the wealth around. <laughs> it goes together, though, you know, okay. in a way. All right. Thank you, Jean. Well, yeah, that, that will be something that, that we'll we'll have those, um the contacts that we have in our system. So then we'll probably have to get other contacts um, through other organizations, maybe chambers, if we can start reaching out to chambers to help us with any women-owned businesses, if they track that in their systems yes. as well. We have a list from Zephyr Hills Chamber that came to us at the last meeting, right? Or the meeting before? Might have been yeah, I have a list out. of yeah, I have it right the here, last meeting. I women owned businesses. Okay. Greater so Zephyr we've got Hills a great Chamber. start. Nice. But we have a start, Lauren. <laughs> I think what would be great Yay. once we're ready Yay. is to put it um, you know, in a creative format and um and position it as something that the commission is putting out to the community. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely uh, sure. I'll, I'll, Lauren, I'll email this to you. Once we have that, it would be Thank great you. to post it as a file under our Facebook page and also on the website. Yes. Yes. But I'm, but I'm suggesting that instead of just putting it out as an Excel spreadsheet, that we add some creative design to it and, um, and it become a product of something that we can all be proud of. Absolutely. I can do that. So, Denise Excellent. sent me an email. She said, I would be happy to be part of marketing subcommittee. Marketing, marketing. Marketing, yeah. Subcommittee. Marketing sub, she put marketing Probably because I said it a marketing effort instead of the event. Oh, yes. Okay, so she, we're adding her to that group, which is item number... 11. 11. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Okay, so are we able to approve the format for the work plan and um, that way it'll become an official document in our meetings in addition to the minutes? The goal is that we would update the work plan based on the meeting and then we're coming back together to really report on our progress and our forward progression. Any questions, any suggestions? I like it. I, the only thing I would add, and which I think some of them you did, would be a deadline on it. Yes. As expected outcomes. Right. That's but the last as we column. Move forward, we can show up those dates. Correct. Then. But I like the idea because you can look at it one piece. Okay, good. And don't put my name in too many places. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think the goal is that, you know, we yeah, all feel comfortable <laughs> not com over committing, but that we. Yeah. spread some Thank of the you. task around and you know my, my grandmother always said many hands make light work so there's 15 Actually. technically 14 of us um, and so we really want to all play a part. Cheryl just um, one final question just for clarification uh -huh. also Kelly asked me she texted me and she said thank you for bringing up about the express feedback for good she had another meeting so she had to hop off. Mm -hmm. um, 
just so I have clarification, because again, I'd love to, to help with the raising money um, for Sunrise with the express feedback for good initiative. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that I need to be a part of the committee? Yes, I mean, I think that the, the, cause what we're trying to do is we're trying to tie 11 with, um, you know, with our focus. And so, and I may need to rephrase, collaborate with existing coalitions and just really name it as mm -hmm. our, you know, the commission focus for the current and upcoming year. Cause we, this year was kind of a wash. We didn't really get to do anything. So yes, the goal is to tie that to the actual um, activity of number nine, which is determine a special method. So we'll take off the word event, but just a, a special method to raise funds for focused, for our focus. And then I'm assuming, do we have to vote on that being what we end up doing? I think that when the recommendation comes back, we desperately gotcha. need people to be in attendance so that we can approve the last two months, or August and October minutes, and then take a vote so that we can move forward okay. and really get some momentum. You know, it's, it's hard when we're talking about all these ideas and then we have to take a step back because we don't have um, present members to take a vote and move forward. Because honestly, if Kelly's planning to kick this off in February, which is an ideal month mm -hmm. to kick it off, there's things that she will be doing in advance mm -hmm. with 100X. I mean, they pretty much set up all the marketing, the messaging, all that kind of stuff in advance. And if we want to kind of be behind it and helping to push it, and if we want to take advantage of some of that, right. we'll need to know a little sooner. If we don't know until later, of course, we can still support them. Um, we just, it, well, I guess my concern would be since we only have one more meeting, is it too aggressive to consider February or would we be able to pick another month? Well, I think Kelly has committed to February. Okay. okay. So, so then I let's think, circle. Yeah, I would say let's circle back with her and Lauren, if you could connect with Kelly um, on that initiative and uh, Dr. Lisa Richardson, that way we know if it's a viable option for us because it, it, it's a fast turnaround. It really and is. And even if we don't agree that we want to participate in February because it's too early, it's very possible that Sunrise, just like PHSC, we were so incredibly successful, we're planning on doing another one in June. Right. Just because of the simplicity and ease and being able to raise money. So yeah, no, that's a great mostly. idea for any nonprofit. So I'm sure that if Sunrise has that same experience, Kelly's probably going to be saying, okay, Ooh, can I have another one in September? Yeah. Or, you know, they recommend you wait about six months or so between each one. Right. Okay. Um, yes, Leo. Question. Since March is Women's History Month, would Kelly consider using that? as her target date well i and think because we'll Fe but they're things. targeting february because that's teen dating violence awareness month oh okay and kelly's probably okay. already in contract right. with right the 100x you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so okay. but that doesn't mean that we can't support them mm -hmm. and still do something yes that will then generate resources to provide resources to our mm -hmm. focus area mm -hmm. Okay, excellent, excellent. Very good discussion, very good comments. Thank you all for actively participating in our November meeting. So I just wanna go through the last few items before we adjourn. It's now that clock is messing me up. It's 1228, not 128. <laughs> so the next meeting, as we mentioned earlier, is December 7th at the historic Pasco County Courthouse in Dade City. The time is 2.30 based on availability. And so we understand that some of you may not be able to attend. However, the work um, product that we are gonna try to accomplish between now and then will be updated in the work plan. And, um, and then we will be able to um, send that out in advance of the meeting as well. Now, the next item B under nine is looking at our dates for 2021. So these are the dates that Johanna will go back to the schedule 
and determine if we can have five in Newport Ritchie, which is our present location, and five in Dade City. And so, um, Johanna, we'll just put that in the, or Leona, put that in the minutes that we are going to wait until we get confirmation on mm -hmm. if that is possible. We've already gone through the review of assignments, and so I officially would like to item A, oh, that, what is that? Why well, you just... I know it kind of jumped yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Probably they forgot to erase that. <laughs> okay, so yes, the meeting is officially adjourned. And thank you all for attending and participating. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of November and a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.